while we do have a bright and sunny day, visibility is fantastic. With the cold temperatures and these even strong winds, it will be a little bit bitter on the outer decks. We're going to check her out on the back deck. side and thusly everything off the left hand side will be the port side. Right and left can change with whatever direction you're facing, but since they're based off the bow, starboard and port always remain the same. So don't say I never taught you anything. But let's begin here off our starboard side, where we are just departing from, at the very end of Long Wharf. Long Wharf is the oldest wharf in continuous use in America. Built in 1710, and named Long Wharf because it is very long. How long, you may ask? It's a ferry. Well, at its inception, it's Long Wharf projected some 2,000 feet off the original shoreline. Please note that I use the term original shoreline. That's because much of modern day Boston, about 75% of it in fact, sits atop man-made land. That's right, three quarters of the city that you're seeing all around the city is standing atop man-made land. In fact, everything you can see with your eye yeah. from this point here in the harbor is man-made. This land is created through a process that we call warfare. Now directly behind us, but the first British soldiers arrived to begin the occupation of the city. And it'd be from Long Wharf that those same soldiers, along with crowd officials and Tory loyalists, would flee the city forever on March 17, 1776. A day that's still celebrated here in Boston as evacuation. Boston was founded in 1630 on what was known as the Charlotte Peninsula, which now known roughly translates to living waters. And ever since the city's founded, Bostonians have garnered a, well, let's just call it a reputation for being rather rowdy and rebellious. Make their way out here to explore the island's most impressive feature, this enormous fortress, which will be coming up in just a moment on our starboard side. This is the Fort Independence. There's always been a fortification out here on Castle Island ever since the city was founded, defending Boston Harbor from hostile incursions from out at sea. But it wasn't always the Fort Independence. Originally, this was just a small wooden stockade called Castle Boom. 
But that would change in 1776 on evacuation day when the British blockade of Boston was finally broken and their forces were forced to retreat. But one of the last things that the British did before departing the city was to bombard and destroy Castle Moon. It wouldn't be until 1799 when second president of the United States, John Adams, would commission the construction in of what would eventually become the Fort Independence out of here. The fort was further fortified over the following decades and manned throughout the American Civil War, though it never saw the action during that conflict. What it did see, however, was a series of illegal duels fought out here on the island. One such duel was fought in 1817 over a drunken game of cards between one Captain Green and Lieutenant Massey. Green accused Massey of cheating and challenged him to the duel, picking sabers as their weapon. The duel was only supposed to be until first blood drawn, but the belligerent Captain Green ended up fatally stabbing Lieutenant Massey. Massey was much beloved by his men on the island, unlike the very unpopular Captain Green. So the lieutenant's men plotted a terrible form of revenge against the captain. They got Green good and drunk and brought him down to the lower levels of the Fort Independence, to the dungeons, where they shackled him to the floor and then with brick and mortar sealed him into the very walls of the oh. Fort Independence, condemning him to a slow death. An excavation of the fort in 1905 did uncover the remains of a human skeleton where had been shackled such behind the central collapsed wall. So this was more than just a tall tale. It was a tale that would go on to inspire a young private stationed in the fort in 1827 who was going under the name of Edgar Perry to write his own short story, which would eventually become the cask of Amontillado. Edgar Perry is actually the alias for famous writer Edgar Allan Poe, of such noble works as A Telltale Heart no way. and Poe, The Raven. Never more. That is so blue. The man, the tree man, the tree of, of food. That, that's, that's, that's Spanish. I don't speak French. I don't speak. What are words? What is life? <laughs> the man, a tree man. La mer. It's a bad. It's a bad. The sensation in the menu scene. Back, back up on the top deck. Bearing through these winds. As we make our way down to the head of the harbor. Everything we are now passing on our starboard side I know. is East Not Boston. There yet. And coming up in just a moment it is one of East Boston's most notable residents. Tied off in front of a small little marina. You know, it is this red, large red hulk vessel with the word Nantucket written on it. Nantucket, as some may know, is a small island off the coast of Cape Cod, surrounded by 90 miles of shallow, rocky shores, making it incredibly dangerous for larger ships to come. It's a light ship. To get around this, they used to utilize vessels like this, Nantucket light ships, which act as mobile lighthouses. Atop each of our mass, lighthouse beacons can be seen from the miles And this particular vessel, LV-112, is the largest Nantucket light ship ever built. She was actually built as a means of compensation after her predecessor was struck and sunk by the modern vessel lift, the sister ship to the Titanic. No luck whatsoever. But they rebuilt her, bigger and better. Now decommissioned, she sits here in East Boston as a permanent resident and is a food museum. Once again, be opening for business, so if folks find themselves in town again this summer, I recommend make your way down into the tall ship. It is quite a treat. Right, go ahead. Soldiers lost theirs. Most of those killed were officers picked off by global officers. The casualties were so famous on the British side. And coming to view on the starboard side is the big lord's first permanent resident. You see a large gray steel hulled vessel. This is the USS Cassidy, a veteran class of 